All right, so let's graph the function. Which one are we doing? x times x minus 2 cubed on negative 1, 3. Okay. Okay, so we know that to graph it, um, we first need the first derivative and second derivative. So that, let's get those out of the way. Um, and make sure you actually, you know, you approach getting this derivative. Don't expand everything. Like, just let's be kind of clever about this. Um, so let's use product rule. So product rule would give us a derivative of 1x minus 2 cubed plus x times 3 minus times x minus 2 squared times 1 by chain rule, right? So we just use product rule. We're not expanding anything. And now let's uh, factor everything, right? Everything will stay factored. So I factor out x minus 2 squared, and I'm left with, um, let's see. So I do have everything right here, right? Okay, good. So what am I left with? I'm left with an x minus 2 um, on the first term, and then plus 3x on the second term, right? So this gives me 4x minus 2. So I can factor out that 2. So 2 times 2x minus 1 times x minus 2 squared. All right, so notice I'm not expanding anything, right? Everything is just being factored, right? And so now let me use product rule again to get the second derivative. OK, so the 2 comes along for the right, right? The 2 is a coefficient. And now we're using product rule. So 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 2x minus 1 times 2 times x minus 2. We get some chain rules in there, but all the chain rules are factors of 1, right? So it doesn't really matter. All right, so we now have a 2. And then factor out, let's see, factor out um, x minus 2. And what are we left with? Left with 2 times x minus 2 plus 2 times 2x minus 1. OK, and then from there, the rest of the simplification should be pretty easy. We're left with 12 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. So we get a common factor of 12 somewhere. OK, so you should be able to you know, do this algebra yourself. But the main thing here is if you want to find this um, derivative, right, don't expand this. Because the reason why you don't want to expand it, if you expand this, you're going to get a fourth degree polynomial. And then when you get the derivative of that, it's going to be a third degree polynomial. And when you set that equal to 0 to get your critical numbers, right, um, you know, solving that equation is going to be a little bit tough. So it's better if I just use product rule instead, because then everything stays nice and factored. right? Notice how I did not have to. Um, I didn't have to actually go off to the side and actually factor everything. The product will kind of naturally factored everything for me. All right, so now let's go through each function, f, f prime, and f double prime, and get what we're supposed to get, right? All the info that we need. Should, should the last line of the second derivative be 2x minus 1? Let me check. That should be x minus 1. Let's just double check that. Oh, I was confused how. Okay. So let's see, 2 times x minus 2. Now there's also another factor of 2, so 4. And I'm still left with x minus 2. I factor out the 2, plus 2x two minus uh, 1. And let's see. I guess I'm going to get a factor of 3 here. 3x three minus 3. And then I factor it under the 3, okay. and I get the x minus 1. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so now let's get our info from f of x. So as a very quick review of yesterday, what do I get from f of x? What are the, what's the information I get on the graph of f of x directly from the function? Horizontal vertical asymptotes, asymptotes, good. And then points on the graph also, if you need that later, but the main thing right now is asymptotes. Okay, so what can you say about horizontal asymptotes? Actually, we always do vertical asymptotes first. So what about vertical asymptotes for this function? Let's just copy the function. What can you say about vertical asymptotes? All right, none. All right, this is a polynomial, so there are no vertical asymptotes.
Okay, now what can we get from horizontal asymptotes? Now, again, it's a polynomial. Polynomials don't have any vertical or horizontal asymptotes, but I think it's still useful to compute the limits for the polynomial um, as x goes to infinity and minus infinity to kind of understand what the graph is going to look like. So let's just do that very quickly. Lim as x goes to infinity of this function. Okay, the x gives me an infinity, x plus two gives me infinity, cube that, I get just a whole bunch of big positive numbers, so I get infinity. And then let's go to negative infinity. So the first factor of x gives me negative infinity, and then I get negative infinity minus two cubed. So I get a negative, and then times a negative cubed. So altogether, I actually get positive. So in other words, this function has no horizontal asymptotes, but it does go up to infinity on both sides, right? As x goes to infinity or plus infinity. All right, remember, in general, polynomials do not have any horizontal asymptotes or vertical asymptotes. They got, they got nothing. All right, let's keep going. 